Hi, this is Peter Stanley. Welcome to my channel. Uh, it's Sunday, September 2nd. Doing my bi weekly grow update. And it's in the morning, a little bit of fog coming out, so it's nice and cool out here. So, it'll be a good time to do this. Um, so, my 27 gallon tote that has two plants is doing very well. Um, this Kingster Red is was the shortest plant now it's the tallest plant it's really growing um, don't have a ton of pods I think it's because of the location it's not getting a ton of sunlight but I do have these are some of the original ones that were on it early on a few more there and this is the uh, star racha bonnet Got a few on there. There we go. These are these little small container plants. I've got this um, MOE Scotch bonnet, and it's got a few more pods. I picked about 30 pods the other day. It's still got some that are turning. I picked all the habaneros, and there's a few more of these on here. This ricotta has got some starting to turn. This is an unknown cross in this other um, tote that's got the, the reservoir fed system. And these um, all turn in chocolate. So I got a ton of these little pods. How they look. It was originally a um, lightning mustard hab, but I'm not sure what it crossed with. Okay. Um, so I've been trying to, these are my drip plants, I've been trying to, to process a bunch of the peppers this week and only got it spent a couple of days on that and I put up about eight or nine different types so I need to push hard to pick a bunch more today and tomorrow I really need to keep the ripe pods picked it's important to do that this is a um, blue Christmas cross and um, this is a bigelokia there's a bunch on here these are a lot smaller than the one in my indoor indoor setup which looks pretty bad right now because the newts um i haven't changed the newts stayed on top of that it needs it like done every two or three days now so i've got to do something with that plant and prune it back or something or put it in a bigger container but anyway these these look good um this plant here is kind of falling over it's the uh, HV white tie and it's kind of leaning over into this maruga not maruga but um to this um reaper cross with maruga and it's like they're kind of growing together i picked a bunch of these off and i've got a bunch more ripe already this um, caramel seven pot's got a bunch that are either over ripe or got some kind of like sun sun scalding See, these are getting sun. This is like a pigmentation effect when there's too much exposure to light. It's um, there's the purpleness. It's not a part of the genetics. It's just from the too much sun because you can see on the underside it doesn't doesn't have it. Um, got over here the Gorpion. Got another round growing up top on here. So I get these these others picked down that'll probably help these ripen. This has been one of my one of my favorite plants this year, this um, peach seven pot. It's been super productive. Really, really nice heat. Nice looking pods too. It's possible there, Justin was telling me that he thinks these may be unstable. 
I'm getting, I really like how these, these pods look. Uh, this is the, uh, <clears throat> the White Boot W strain. Yep. Some of these pods don't look that great, like that one. And it seems like they are mostly ripening to kind of an off-white color. Because I've left some of these on longer and they just start look like they're going bad. But, um, but I like these a lot. I made some really nice uh, jelly with, with a batch not too long ago. So I've got the uh, Shishi Toe here. And I need to pick all of these off and cook them. They um, super productive. I've left these on long enough they're starting to turn right, which is fine too. Here's uh, Blue Christmas. Looks really nice with this morning dew on it. But looks like a branch. It hasn't broken, but it's leaning over heavily. And um, this one's falling over too. I had a stake here, but it, and that failed to uh, tie it to it. But it's uh, the king cross the goat's weed. That's uh, what we call hog's weed. Um, accidental cross discovered by guy named, goes by a hog's leg on um, hot pepper. No, we, um, Elysium oxide scotch bonnet. This is the red one that I'm growing from last year, and this is a new one. It's the rust color. Let me take a peek. I picked a bunch of these, both of these off, and I've got more more turning. The the red is my favorite of the of the um ones well, so there's a mustard one too but this is the more like the truer kind of rustic rust color so chocolate ghost jammy it's possible this is crossed but i know this is an unstable pepper too but um it started out with tails and the after a while they started throwing out more like straighter looking pods it's a, it's a kind of a fat one there. It's another one. They're really, really, really hot. And this is the um, Papuchito Cross, which I think I always say unknown, but I'm pretty sure it's with the bubble gum. You can see this bleeding, bleeding calyx. It has. These will bleed up to the stem to leave them on there long enough. Here's a fish pepper. This is a really nice plant. Got a few on there ripe. I've been picking some of these. Here's a green one there. Here's my orange brain from Michael Christensen. And they mostly um, kind of been coming out uh, mostly kind of yellow, but they have a little bit of an orange tint if you leave them on there long enough. But there's a bunch. And they're really nice peppers. And it's my chocolate bootla DM. This has been real productive. The plant's not gigantic, but it's been really, really productive. And I've picked um, a bunch. I just harvested a bunch last week, and I've picked a few um, a few pat, uh, batches prior to that. It's my uh, gochi pepper. A few of these been on here too long. Let me toss them. I got to do something with these before it's too late. I wanted to try to make some kimchi or something, but I don't know. This is the uh, chocolate unreaper. It's a few right. Yeah, it's pretty gnarly. Gnarly looking pods here. Oh, there's a bunch. This is a uh, Star Watch of Hornet. The King Star Cross of a Reaper and a Scotch Bonnet. 
And I just realized I've got I saw the pod. This is a volunteer plant that popped up. I didn't notice it until now, but it's it's got a fruit on it. Almost looks like an ahi type from the leaf on the flowers. Can't get a good close up on it, but uh, this is the Star Watch uh, bonnet. And here's some with a really cool, really cool shape on that one. Some of these have been just kind of elongated, like that one. But some have the the tail, and that that one looks really, really cool. That'd be a good one for a seed, which wouldn't be isolated. But I've got some isolated ones tag somewhere. This is another one I really need to pick down soon. There's a bunch on here. Here's the Kangster Red. This thing's been a beast. Another Kangster cross. And I picked two pounds the other day and I picked another batch yesterday for some to make some jelly. So I've got a few on here. Uh, some mostly ripe and a lot of green ones still. It's been very, very productive. This is um, that unknown red goose scorpion cross. It's putting out the yellow pods and it's got a bunch that are ripe. This is the plant that was real sickly and then it kind of took off and it's putting out a lot of fruit. Here's the berry amarillo that's flopped over onto this ricotta here but it's got a bunch of um, a bunch of fruits that I need to harvest here soon. Another one falling over is this Chilteppin. Yeah, this is the uh, street kitchen crossed with Thai Dragon. It's been like super super productive. I picked so many off of this plant. Here's a volunteer tomato that popped up out of nowhere from I don't know a year or two ago. So I have some tomatoes in pretty soon. Uh, this is a ricotta cross it's actually my cross, but I was discovered by Susan Garza. She grew out some seeds I sent. And uh, it's supposed to be an Ecuadorian red. But it crossed, it looked like, with the pineapple ricotta that I was growing. That's how they look. It's just like the one on the porch, but from a slightly different pheno, but the same, from the same original batch. But yeah, it's got some that are, that are turning. This one, white goose. This one's done a poor job with keeping the weeds out of these. But, um, and I just weeded around here yesterday, so there's a bunch of stuff on it. That's how those look. I picked a bunch of these off too already. Uh, here's the um, lemon starburst. Another king star cross. A uh, cross between a MOA scotch bonnet. And a uh, Bahamian goat. Get underneath here. Uh, see, there's a there's a bunch on here that need to be picked. There's a bunch more green up here. That's a real productive plant. There's more back in there. Some of these had the little distinct tails. Like here's one. But most of them don't. But here's one that's kind of got a little tail. I need to make something with these. This is the JT Yellow Tie. Most of these, this is like a super productive plant, but most of these are kind of white looking, um, sort of pale yellow. And they, and they start going more orange. And kind of a red-orange color. But uh, it's been like a really interesting plant. And there's a bunch more flower sites of all these pods. So I'm interested to see how... Um, I need to try to make some flakes with these and see how they are. I think they'd be really good. Here's my um, hot banana. There's a bunch on there still. Be picking now this more. I've got a bunch of bleached out sun scalded pods on my Bigelokia cross with sugar rush peach. The ones that are under 
canopy more, a little better. Um, I picked a lot of these off as well, but it's it's a pretty pretty productive plant. It needs a little more TLC than I've been giving it. This is the uh, Banda Majak Red. This thing is like crazy productive, and it's one of those that I want to try to pick down today and tomorrow. Get this caught up. These are really hot. I don't think um, it's true to the one I was sent. There's another batch there. Hasu sent me, but I don't, I don't think it's the same pepper as the yellow Bonamajac because these are like a, a super hot cross with something. They're like they're in the like really hot hot range. I mean, it's not like a super as hot as a super hot, but you can tell it's got some kind of a super mix with with a habanero type pepper. Uh, if you eat one, you'll know you know what I'm talking about. There, um, they pack a punch. It's super prolific too. Uh, this is my check winds. I got a bunch on here. I need to go ahead and pick. I'm gonna try throwing these in the dehydrator and see how they do. The one thing I like about these is they're super easy to pick. You basically they just pop off like that. So, um, and the the chill teppins are like that too. They just really just pop off. So, so yeah, so there's a bunch more on there. So I'm gonna try to get those today or this weekend. Here's my daddle plant. Got a quite a few. It's like something got into that one. But these generally look pretty good, I think. These are really good pepper. This, my seeds came from a pod that that someone brought back from St. Augustine. And it grew out true to that pod, and, and then I isolated it. So it's something I'll grow every year. I really like the daddle pepper. Nice fruity flavor, real sharp heat, a little bit hotter than habanero. Uh, I can see why they're so popular down there. And they always had these like kind of curly leaves. I think it's just a trait of the plant, of the strain I'm growing. But um, I don't think there's anything wrong with the plant health in that. Some of these got some little sun sunburn I was telling you about earlier. All right, um, so that's my uh, my grow for um, these two weeks. So um, they're doing doing well. Um, just want to share that. Uh, so post another one in two weeks. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe.